At the beginning of this week's Torah portion, Moses, Moshe, gathers the entire Jewish people together to speak to them. One commentator points out that he's gathering them together not just to speak to them, but for another reason. Prior to the sin of the golden calf, the Jews had encamped around the mountain, around Mount Sinai, to hear the word of God. And the Torah describes that encampment using a singular verb to point out that even though there were many people, they were really like one person with one heart. Incredible unity. But they lost that after the sin of the golden calf. Dissension crept in, infighting, arguments between factions and tribes. So Moshe was trying not just to gather them together, but to unify them, to recapture some of that lost achdas, that lost unity. Rashi, the greatest of the biblical commentators, points out that Moshe did not gather them by force. He didn't put his hands on anyone and drag them by the scruff of his neck into the meeting area. Instead, they came through his word. He invited them and they showed up to hear his words, which they understood were the words of God. And that's a cautionary lesson for us as parents, as rabbis, as teachers, as well-meaning friends who are trying to inspire friends, students, or children. You can't inspire with force. You've got to inspire with words. And those words have to be kind words, words meant to build people up rather than knock them down. They can't be words of threat and they can't be words of intimidation. That will destroy your relationship with the person you're trying to inspire. And worse, it'll destroy their relationship with God. And that relationship, a relationship between a person and God, is a relationship between that person and God only. You shouldn't be in the middle of it, no matter how well-meaning you are. When I was a young boy in day school, there was one particular rabbi who had a signature move. He would come over and put his hand around someone and kind of rub their back of their neck or their shoulder. And it was supposed to show affection. You know, it was very nice. He liked you. But what was really going on is that he was trying to tell whether you were wearing tzitzes or not. And that used to drive me crazy. I was too young to articulate just what it was that bothered me so much. But I know what I wanted to do. I wanted to scream. When I got older in school, there were certain days where I would show up late to services and I would get summoned into the head rabbi's office. By then I was able to articulate what bothered me. I would say to the rabbi respectfully, I'm gonna agree with you that it's wrong to come late to services. But if it's wrong, doesn't that create a problem between me and God? Why is it a problem between me and you? I don't understand what you're doing in between me and God. And the rabbi never had a good answer for that because there is no good answer for that because respectfully, he did not belong in the middle of that relationship. And that's what we've got to watch out for as parents, as rabbis, as teachers, as well-meaning friends. Inspire with love, inspire with words, not with force. Build people up, don't knock them down, don't threaten, don't intimidate. Help them out with a big smile. You'll assist your relationship with them and in so doing, you'll assist their relationship with God. That relationship that's private just between them and God. And you need to stay out of it. And if you do that, it'll be win-win instead of lose-lose.